A couple months ago, I uploaded a video on my top 10 ugliest modern cruise ships. A surprising number of you asked for a follow-up video on the top 10 prettiest modern cruise ships, so here is that video. In making this list, I used a few guidelines. First, each ship must either be currently in service or being built. Second, I only considered ocean-going cruise ships in service for a major cruise line. I think we all know what I mean by a major cruise line. Companies like Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian would of course count, and so would the lesser known budget companies such as TUI Cruises, Pullmanter, and Morella Cruises. Basically, if the company operates ships which have been or could be operated by the well-known major cruise lines, I would consider their ships in this list. The third and final rule is that I will only include one ship from a given class of ships, just like in the ugliest cruise ships video. I was accused by a few of you in the last video of being a cruise ship hater. I can see how you might be given that impression, but I'm definitely not a cruise ship hater. I've been on a number of cruises in my life, intend to go on more in the future, and I can appreciate modern cruise ships for what they are. They might not be as beautiful as the best of the traditional ocean liners of yesteryear, but many of them are attractive in their own right. Okay, let's get into this list, starting with number 10, Freedom of the Seas. Once the largest passenger ship in the world, Freedom of the Seas falls right in the middle of the large cruise ship market of 2023. It's been more than 15 years since she was the biggest, and that is apparent just by looking at her. It's not because she looks small, she certainly doesn't and isn't small, but because she was designed during a simpler time in the cruising industry. That is, she was designed before every new cruise ship had to have the latest and greatest and have some flashy new innovations on top of that. When Freedom was delivered in 2006, she was the biggest ship and had everything you could want on a cruise ship, but at the end of the day, was still just a big cruise ship in the higher end market. As such, Freedom of the Seas has a relatively sleek profile, due in part to her immense length and standard exterior facing features. Most notably to me is her stern, which extends further aft the lower you go within the superstructure. This is a design choice which Royal Caribbean stuck to until the last couple of new classes of ships, and always made their ships look a bit classier than some of the ships of their competitors. There's not much else to say about Freedom of the Seas. She's sleek, tasteful, and pretty buttoned up for a cruise ship of her size and type. Number 9. Aurora Speaking of buttoned up ships, Aurora of P&O Cruises is even more so due partly to her being delivered in 2000, when balcony cabins were not quite the necessity that they are in today's cruise market. Aurora has a terraced stern which looks very nice and traditional. She also has a singular, simple funnel which forgoes the frills which funnels of other ships had even at the time of her launch. I'm not crazy about the shape of Aurora's bow, however, since I don't think it quite matches the grace of the rest of the ship. And unfortunately, I think her newer livery is a substantial step down from the original, particularly the color of the funnel. Number eight, Carnival Spirit. This is the only class of ships in Carnival's modern fleet that I like from an exterior perspective. Carnival Spirit has a simple and relatively sleek profile, even when compared to some of the earlier ships in Carnival's fleet. There's nothing too noteworthy about Carnival Spirit or her sisters, she just looks like a cruise ship, and these days, actually quite a small cruise ship at just under 90,000 gross register tons. If it wasn't for the obligatory whale tail funnel, this ship might have even made it higher on the list. As long as that remains the standard across Carnival's fleet, this might be as high as a Carnival ship could make it on my prettiest cruise ship list. Number 7. Westerdam this is one of the ships of the prolific Vista class of ships, which originally was designed for Holland America Line, and was adapted for ships of other cruise lines under the Carnival Corp umbrella. That said, the original Holland America variants are the most attractive of the bunch. Westerdam, sort of by definition, is a generic cruise ship in many ways. Still, the Vista class was designed at a time when a normal, run-of-the-mill cruise ship was still decent looking. Holland America's classic livery and other design elements also go a long way in sprucing up Westerdam. Most obvious is the black hull, which almost always looks good on a ship, especially when the ship is surrounded by all white ships in the harbor. More subtle are the simple dual funnel design and tinted glass of the balcony cabins. It certainly doesn't hurt that Westerdam's decks are clear of slides and other eyesores. Number 6. Norwegian Spirit This is an interesting one. You might recall from the 10 ugliest cruise ship videos that I'm not a big fan of Norwegian as a customer and certainly not as a ship enthusiast. Perhaps it is fitting that the one Norwegian ship on the prettiest cruise ships list 
is one which wasn't originally designed for Norwegian at all. Norwegian Spirit was originally ordered for Star Cruises, but was transferred to Norwegian Cruise Line six years later. Norwegian Spirit is the smallest of Norwegian ships, and in my opinion, is by far the prettiest one. She is modern and bold, but still looks very much like a ship in the traditional sense. I especially like her bow, which looks like it belongs to a small power boat, which is fitting for this small ship of about 75,000 gross register tons. I've actually been aboard Norwegian Spirit myself, and I can say that she packs a punch for such a small ship. She was a bit dated when I was on board, but she has been heavily renovated, and I understand that the refurbishment was extremely successful. Most important for the purpose of this video is the change to her hull art, which is now much more subdued, simple, and modern. If a ship has to have hull art, I prefer it to look like this, rather than this. Number 5. Explorer of the Seas you might notice that this ship looks a lot like the ship in the number 10 spot on this list, Freedom of the Seas. They definitely have a lot of similarities, which I cannot ignore. And the Freedom class clearly took inspiration from the older Voyager class, which Explorer is a part of. In a lot of ways, Freedom is a scaled up rendition of Explorer. But they are different classes of ship, and I think Explorer of the Seas edges out Freedom of the Seas in terms of outward appearance. The main difference between these two classes for me is the fact that the balcony cabins on the Explorer of the Seas are built into the superstructure, rather than extending out from the side of the superstructure. This is uncommon on cruise ships because it makes the balcony feel more closed in, because it is, which is not as ideal for cruises when sailing in warm climates like the Caribbean. Depending on how the ship is built, this type of balcony design could also mean less interior cabin space. So I can see why very few cruise ships have this type of balcony cabin design. Still, it looks very nice when compared to other ships. It's a much cleaner and aerodynamic look, and the cutouts for the balconies on Explorer of the Seas resemble large portholes from a distance. Number 4. Coral Princess This ship is not exactly what comes to mind when I think of Princess Cruises, but she is a part of the Princess fleet, and in my opinion, a very nice looking cruise ship. Coral Princess combines a lot of what I like about Norwegian Spirit and Carnival Spirit. Coral Princess is, by today's standard, a small cruise ship, like many others on this list, and is therefore able to be quite sleek. She has a very similar bow to Norwegian Spirit, but doesn't have the bulge in the bridge that Spirit does. This, along with the design of her superstructure, make Coral Princess a clean-looking ship overall, even compared with other ships on this list. The only thing I don't love about the ship is the superstructure at the stern. I wish the stern was less vertical. But I still really like this ship, and I wish Princess, which is a premium cruise line that I like overall, had more than two nice looking ships, the other one being Coral Princess's sister ship, Island Princess. Number 3. Brilliance of the Seas There must be something about the medium sized cruise ships that I appreciate. Brilliance of the Seas, like many of the other ships on this list, is what would today be considered a small cruise ship by most, but to me is a medium sized cruise ship because it was medium until quite recently. She is approximately 90,000 gross register tons, and I think looks even smaller than that. Maybe that's because I unfairly compare her to her much, much larger fleetmates. Brilliance of the Seas and her sisters present as modern cruise ships, but tasteful and modest ones. They have the balconies and many of the other amenities you would expect on a Royal Caribbean ship, but fit inside a hall that is pleasing and simple. I may be rambling now, so I'll just say that Brilliance of the Seas has all of the attributes I like about the Voyager and Freedom classes, which are earlier on this list, but in a scaled down form, which adds to the appeal to me. Number two, Celebrity Millennium. If you're a committed viewer of this channel, you might have picked up on the fact that I am enamored by the Millennium class ships of Celebrity Cruises. I can't pretend that I'm not biased in my opinion of Millennium and her sister ships. Millennium was the first big ship I cruised on back in 2006, and she is the ship which piqued my interest in passenger ships. While I reserve the right to show a little bias in my own video, I do think that my opinion of Celebrity Millennium is warranted. This ship is bold, especially for the era in which she was designed for. After all, Millennium was launched before the traditional Brilliance of the Seas. She is pretty angular, almost to the point of looking like a fairy, but this is by design. Millennium was meant to look modern to match the Celebrity brand, and she certainly does look modern even in her original form which dates back to, well, the turn of the Millennium. Still, she looks very much like a ship, and has a long bow for a cruise ship, and a tiered superstructure both fore and aft. Speaking of aft, her stern is unapologetically square. Really, it's almost literally a square. Traditionally, this would not be a good look, 
but it does work for Millennium, partly because her after superstructure compensates. Millennium has aged remarkably well, in my opinion. She was built to look modern, but unlike many designs of the 90s, Millennium fits right into the 2020s, if you ask me. I think this is because Millennium is one of those classic designs that just doesn't go out of style. Create a new livery for her, and maybe update her interiors, and she is a competitor in the 2020s cruising industry, despite her smaller size. Number 1. Icon of the Seas. I'm just kidding. Disney Magic. I bet a lot of you are waiting for this one. Disney Magic and her sister, Disney Wonder, are unique in the cruising industry. They are cruise ships by every definition of the term, but their designers went out of their way to make them capture the aura of ocean liners. Disney Magic has a very long bow, a black hull, a graceful stern, and dual funnels, even if one of them is for show. The proportions of the ship are about as good as you could possibly expect for a modern cruise ship. A lot of care went into the outward appearance of these ships, and Disney Magic is the ship I like to point to when people try to argue with me that no modern cruise ships are designed with exterior aesthetics in mind. Disney even went the extra mile and obtained a waiver to change the color of the ship's lifeboats to match the rest of the livery, and it was well worth it if you ask me. These ships are marvels in the modern cruise industry, and they will likely never be matched again, because, unfortunately, subsequent classes of Disney ships just don't have the same magic, or wonder, of the original Disney duo. So what do you think of my list? Did I miss any of your favorite cruise ships? Do you actually think any of the ships on my list are hideous monstrosities? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.